I'm Gab, he's Jules. Welcome to the Gab and Jules, the third annual Gab and Jules draft. Uh, Jules, I'm excited. You excited? I'm so good, man. I, I am this. I'm hyped and I'm amped. My heroes don't appear on stamps, but they will appear soon because we're going to be joined <laughs> by Tor Christian Carlson Woo-hoo! and Ryan O'Hanlon. O'Hanlon, even. Uh, Ryan O'Hanlon, of course, is uh, one of our our data guys. He's much more than that. He's a very talented journalist, but he's going to bring an analytics perspective to it. Yeah. Whereas Tor Christian Carlson, as you know, I former know. Monaco, Bayer Leverkusen, right. Watford scout, um, he is going to bring the scout side, the eye test. So yeah. um, they're going to be competing with us this time around. And here they are. Welcome, Ryan. Welcome, Tor. Now, before we get into it, and as a reminder, uh, we will be. We're only allowed to pick players born in 2002. Players who are younger than that mm-hmm. are not eligible. So you know, sorry, your Laminia Mouse thing ain't gonna no, work. Yes. His uh, time will come, but just not. His time will come in a few. Yeah, when we do what the 2006 version of this, <laughs> who knows if we'll still be around then? When <laughs> um, <laughs> he becomes old enough to get eligible to be drafted, um, there's gonna be four rounds. We, so we were going to make five picks each. We will will employ the snake method. Uh, but before we get to that, because, of course, you and I have done this yeah. uh, before. Yeah. And, you know, we do the draft. People say, Jules, you're a moron. Gab, you're an idiot. Ha, ha, ha. But how do we actually evaluate who did better in our past drafts? <laughs> so I've asked Ryan and Tor to do this for us. Now, I'm going to take us back. To the uh, and it's right here on my phone, to the 2000 draft yeah. where uh, you had the first pick, and your picks were Erling Holland, that's right, Alfonso Davies, thank you, Ori- Aurelien Schwameni, of course, Anthony, uh oh, mm-hmm. and uh, Sven Botman. Oh. Uh, my picks, and you can see them here up on the screen Phil Foden, Vinicius, Jonathan David, Dusan Vlavic, and Tonali. Of yep. course, Tonali, I don't know if he was betting at the time, but he was certainly he eligible was certainly to play betting. at the time. Uh, now, we might both have our thoughts on who did better, but let's get Ryan's <laughs> quick sum up. Ryan, who won the Gavin Jules 2000 draft? Was it me or was it Jules and why? Well, it's leaning toward Jules after the first three picks. Holland, oh, Davies, too many superstars. Uh, and then he just drafted Anthony, which I... I don't know if this draft was 15 rounds. I'm not sure. Anthony would have been a good pick. And it was Gab, good at the have... time, Ryan. It was good. He was okay at the time. I don't think he was <laughs> good at stretching it. So I think Gab just simply by having a sort of unspectacular final three picks, even though you have a guy who uh, is currently suspended from playing football, I give you the edge. Thank you. By the way, we're taking a long-term view of this. It doesn't matter what they've achieved thus far. It matters what they might achieve in the future. What what they've achieved since, in Tonali's case, doesn't look good for your draft. That's what I'm saying. When when, when Italy win the 2030 World Cup and Tonali lifts it as captain, you will thank me. Do your homework properly. Um, Tor, we need to get the your view on uh, on this draft. Is it Team Gab 2000 or Team Jules 2000? Yeah, I think um, I think G- Gabriella wins by quite a ma- quite a margin because oh, quite a margin. Um, yeah, because I think Anthony is such a well, <laughs> it, it's such a disaster that uh, you know at least according to my score system, he kind of brought Jules' average down massively, and oh, obviously that might have been. Affected by Jules uh, Gabriella just having four players to to be counted, but I think they were they were good, very very good choices. Folden, Vinny Junior, Johnson, David, and Vlaovic are all, you know, well, none of them have uh, failed. Erling Haaland, though, Tor, I thought you'd be on my team on this but, one. Remember, okay. We move, we move, we move. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's move on to 2001 now. Now uh, this time we 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 picked more players. Uh, you can see them up on the street. I'm not going to read out all their names, but my graft from uh, 2000 included uh, Bukayo Saka, Enzo Fernandez, uh, and others. Now, I know when it gets yeah, into the second yeah. half. I'm sure you don't want to. Yes, you're yeah. going to have, people are going to take issues with Nicky Beans, Nicolò Fajoli. Maybe he would have been really good if he hadn't started betting and got himself suspended. And there might be a pattern there with Tonali. Uh, 
Armando Broja. I still love him. Not everybody's cup of tea. And, of course, Mr. Mihailo Mudrik. I know people will bring this up. Yeah. Jules, let's look at uh, let's look at yours. Oh, quality. Uh, you did very well there with Kvartskelia, Moises Caicedo, Urian Timber. We haven't quite seen that. Um, I really like Michael Olise. I should have picked Michael Olise. Quickly, do we need to warn whoever you pick in this, this year's draft about – someone getting suspended for gambling because I think that's <laughs> like a, if I pick them trend. and they're an Italian central midfielder, it's highly likely. That would end up <laughs> exactly. Um, I, I think this draft, it's actually the reverse of the, of the previous one. I think Gab, you have a really high ceiling with a lot of your picks. You started off so well. And then Mudrik, who you picked, I want to point out you picked him <laughs> after, after like his first season in the Premier League. This wasn't when he was at Shakhtar and he had all the hype around him. And then also Broya. I feel like we're trying to make Broya happen and it's just just not happening. Well, Jules, his picks don't have maybe the, the same potential, I guess, overall as yours, but none of the picks are a complete disaster. Like those two picks, basically. <laughs> no, but he loves Mudrik's hair and tattoos. That's why he picked him. Oh, yeah, yeah, because Yuri and Timber's been great, hasn't he? <laughs> He right? got injured. It's not his oh, fault. He oh, got sorry, injured. Right? Before, you got to consider. His ACL. You, right? you going to blame him? Uh, you, you've been unlucky with defenders in ACLs. Botman as well. There, there is know. a pattern there. Uh, Tor, are you, do you share Ryan's view that Jules might have just edged this after my Mudrik and Brosha pitch, picks? Yeah, I think so. Um, well, I follow Ryan on, on his reasoning there. I think what... Excited me a bit about this draw. Obviously, you've got seven players in each, so you can perhaps turn a bit more left field in your picks. But I thought it was cool that you had Ruben in, Gabriele. Should, that was uh, an extra um, yeah. markup for me. And I also like that um, Jules got Olis, Olis and uh, Onana, which I think are, you know, Thank pretty you. Um, pretty nice kind of scout. He's done his scouting homework there. But I Thank think you. I'm the total, I think the best. Uh, I'm learning from the best. <laughs> I think Jules just, just edges it there. Come on. All right. Okay. All right. So it's so it's a draw. So now we go to the Oracle. Ultimately, right? It's all about the bottom line, yeah. right? Transfer valuations. Now, there is no Oracle transfer valuations. The closest that we get is Transfermarkt. Now, Transfermarkt has all its foibles. Mm -hmm. It's a bunch of German guys sitting in a basement. Putting up numbers, updating valuations. Uh, it can they be screwy. Be in the basement. They might be in a nice open Yeah, one of those place. glass buildings. I'm sure they're wearing sandals with socks we as they speak. <laughs> Maybe but not. Or might be as well, actually, for all we know. <laughs> um, so, but anyway, let's just see what Transfer Mark says. Yeah. And I can tell you that the value of Team Gab 2000s today is 435 million euros. Nice. At the time of the draft, it was 370 million euros. That's an increase of 17.6%. Yeah. And that means the value of Team Jewels 2000 was 403 million, which Ooh. means I win, although you have a higher increase. That's the most important. Um, so you are trending in the right direction with that one. 2001? Yeah. Right, the one where everybody laughed at me. Ha 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 ha. Broja, we whatever. Still laughs at you. Guess what? I win that one too because my transfer mark value you is five hundred and eighty-three million. I know because I'm thinking. I'm thinking. But that's not the idea. That's a change of zero point five percent. Which one was the most expensive squad? Well, that's the, the, that. That is that is one of the criteria here, right? We need a tiebreaker. Uh, Jules, can I can tell you about your two thousand one draft? Your transfer mark value today is 507 million. Right. At the time of the draft, it was 530 million, which money. means the value of many of these players has actually gone down among those who've gone down in value, according to transfer marked, which of course take it with a grain of salt. People like Moises Caicedo, like yeah. uh, Kvarat Scalia, I don't blame Benoit Badiashile, yeah. your boy Manu Kone. So, yeah, nice. all right. Anyway, this is all wrong. This is the past. Now it's time <laughs> to turn to the present, the future, because the Gab and Jules 2002 year of birth draft is about to commence. Now, you may be wondering, gentlemen, draft order, how are we going to determine it? Yep. Well, producer Freddie has a solution. 
Oh, this looks I mean, it's extremely, <laughs> extremely high tech. This reminds me of chat roulette somehow. Um, <laughs> so do I just say spin and the wheel starts spinning? Should I try doing Is that? This first pick or you, let, let's right. do a try. Jules, Jules, this will be for the first pick. And when you say spin, that wheel will start spinning. Okay. Spin. Amazing. Oh. The suspense. Come on. Here we go. Jules, you get the first pick um, in my first the pick. draft. Now for the second pick. Why don't I say spin next time? Because I have a feeling whoever says spin ends up you know, being chosen. Yep. So spin. Go on, go on. Ah, to. Yes, to. <laughs> okay, Gav, you, you pick in fourth. All right, Ryan, it's me and you. It didn't work last time. Do you want to say spin? Spin. Come on, Ryan. Ryan likes the pick three. Mm -hmm. Hey! hey what do you know? I get to go last. So, it's okay. you can have so the, unfair. You can doesn't, have if you want. doesn't matter because it's all about the brains and it's all about the snake here. All right, gentlemen. So the way it's going to work, I am. Sim we're simply going to go through this, and I'm going to, I'm going to call it out. Yeah. And you will have. You'll be on the clock. Just tell us who your pick is, and in a couple sentences, why. Like I said, I only have one player on here who's worthy by Gab standards of my number as of being a first round pick. Okay. I'm pretty sure you will pick him, but I am really curious about this. <laughs> so Jules, with the number one pick in uh, the Gab and Jules draft. You select? I select Eduardo Camavinga. Come on, come on, Camavinga. Come on, come on, Camavinga. Do you want more explanation? Is that's all you're going to give me? Oh, just an amazing talent. He can play everywhere. I think I think there's so much more to come even. He's already so mature for his age, the energy, the everything. There's not there's just nothing I don't like about Eduardo Camavinga. All right. To our Christian Carlson. You are on the clock with the second pick in the Gavin Jules 2002 draft. Okay, we're going to play safe here. So I'm going to go Pedri. Yeah, of course. Ah, that's the yeah. obvious number one. Of course. Well, he's already one of the best midfielders in the world, no matter the age. And, you know, he's, he's going to be with us as an absolute world star for the next 15 years. So you, it's not gonna, he's not going to fail me. He's not going to let me down. All right. Okay. I saw his medical uh, file, though. Oh, yeah. That's, that's part of your research. I'm just yeah. saying. I'm just saying. You bought his medical file on the dark web, <laughs> as we do, which I'm sure is what Ryan did, too, uh, and it, to inform his next pick. Third pick in the Gabin Jewels uh, 2002 draft. All right. Before I pick, I want to point out, putting my money where my mouth is in that I think data, for the most part, can do a better job of projecting performance than my eyes. So I contracted off my picking ability to 21st Group, a consulting firm. They sent me their uh, top 50 rated players born in I 2002. That. And that will mostly be driving my picks here. Uh, a, a little <laughs> bit of Ryan sauce on top of it. But this will I mean, you're, you're giving you're, you're giving these guys a free plug here, right? He's allowed. I mean, well, they, if you look out the window, out. right, they, and yeah. you see that brand new Escalade in Ryan's driveway, <laughs> we know where that's coming from. All right, guys, go for it, Ryan. I'm driving a Kia. Just wanted to point that out. Uh, third pick, I'm going with Josko Gvardiol. Um, I think nice. he uh, obviously has played a ton of minutes at a position where young players typically don't play that much. I think he's maybe struggled a little bit in his first season at City compared to what we might have expected. But I think most center backs or fullbacks, center back, fullback hybrids of the play for Pep struggle a little bit at the beginning and he's sort of become a first choice player now and i think going forward a center back that's playing a ton at this age it's a lot more rare than a winger or midfielder playing at this age so i think going forward there's just a ton um a ton of production to come from guardiola nice well, i appreciate top three, top three really strong with my pick the number four pick in the gavin jules 2002 draft 
I'm going to go. I'm not. I was going to go for a value pick, and I'm. I'm really on. I'm really on the edge. But I, I am scared so. to do it. Also, I think this guy's going to be around later. So I'm going to go for the man who I believe is currently the Premier League's top goal scorer. And you're all ignoring. That's right. Stone Cold Palmer. Uh, I am not a Cole Palmer guy at all, but I've become one. Um, I'm going against a conventional wisdom that, oh, look, Man City let him go. He didn't think he was good. He goes into what I think is a pretty poor team, despite... Yeah whatever uh, Pochettino says about analytics, say that they should be top four or whatever. Uh, he scores goals. He's pretty, he's very, very easy on the eye. And um, I think he's got a good future ahead of him. How many penalties? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He's a penalty guy, right? He just scored a hat-trick <laughs> this weekend. Or sorry, a lot of Monday, four goals, whatever it was. Stop it. Stop it. I get to go again. I get to make my value pick. And I'm going to pick a player in the Premier League from Brighton and Hove Albion. And it's not Ansu Fati. It is Simon Adingra. I like silence in the room, but oh, I think he's been even. tremendous this year. I don't think this is a great draft at all relative to the ones that we've had in, in, in previous years. I think there's a really big upside. And I just wanted to annoy Ryan because I know that the analytics nerds are all very big on Simon Adingra. Adingra, even. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you're up now, Ryan. You can't pick a Dingra like you wanted. Yeah. You Who want you got? Him. We know you wanted him. Uh, we're just going to stick with the pattern that I'm currently on of taking Manchester City players. We're going to go with Jeremy Doku, um, a player who's already on the best team in the world, unlike Simon Adingra, and getting playing time for that team. He also has the most expected assists and progressive carries of any player on this list. Um, at this point in his career, despite not really being a full-time starter in most of the seasons in his career so far. So Doku, I think you watch him play, it's pretty obvious. The physical tools are all there and the end product is coming along. So I like I like Doku as a as a high ceiling and he's also already on Manchester City. So the floor, I think, is pretty high too. Go. I mean, I know I, you are. You, no, you, I you know what happened? And I will show you this afterwards. So I'm, I'm erasing him. let Doku go no. through. So I had Doku. On my second list, right? And he was he was basically right next to Kamavinga. When I erased Kamavinga, because Doku is a stupid short name, he can't have a nice long I'm name. Not I did, I can I'm show you. I can prove it to you. You missed him, you missed him. Whatever. Well, whatever. Hey, look, you like those big volume uh stat plays? Go for it. Enjoy. Um, Tor, you're up. Seventh pick. Right. Um I kind of went with the, the obvious choice. Now we've got to be a little bit more creative. Um, I'm going Nico Williams from Athletic oh, Bilbao. That's the one I was going to go for, though. <laughs> I think, uh, you know, the reasoning is a bit similar to Ryan's with Doku. I think there's so much potential. You know, the end product might still be lacking a little bit, but there's so much, um, you know, pure talent, physicality, pace, power, one against one capabilities. and you know, as a player who's 21, I think it's it, it, it and he's obviously going to get a move at some point and his value will increase. Jules, you're up with the eighth pick, yeah. And you know where we are here. This is uh, Paris. Bradley Barcola is my second pick. <laughs> I just have to choose the night. I love him so much. The guy can't do no wrong in my eyes, can do no wrong in my eyes. He's still quite raw and he needs to learn. There's a lot of things I will teach him, me and Luis Enrique. But I think, really, I really think that he's got an incredible potential. And I think for first season in Paris, with all the pressure, the expectations, he's done really well at times. The games where he hasn't been on, and, and that's fine. He's still very young. And let's not forget, he only had six months really at Lyon before making the move to Paris. But he will go to the Euros, I think, if Kingsley Coman is uh, injured and not back. And I can see why Deshaun would pick him because I think he's that kind of player that is so unpredictable, can go both ways, right, left, on his right foot, on his left foot. We saw the cross for Dembele uh, in Barcelona on Tuesday night. I just love Bradley Bacola and also he's a PSG player, so you know. You had to do that. I wonder if there's any other PSG players for you to pick. Oh, uh, Maybe my next Portuguese one is, ones. My next one, my third pick, I select Nuno Mensch. There you go. Uh, <laughs> All that Nuno, one. Boy. Okay, I'm a little bit worry about his injury um history but i think if if he stays fit and i you know if he if he develops physically like he should i think there is an incredible left back there uh I, again i think 
defensively at times, and we saw against uh, La Minia Mal against Barcelona on Tuesday in the Champions League that there's still some work to do. But I just think in terms of pace, physicality, technical ability, he's got everything. So for me, Nuno Mench is there. All right. So this brings us to the number 10 pick in the Gavin Jewels 2002 draft. Uh, Tor, you're up. Oh, it's starting to get tricky. <laughs> um, but I think the obvious ones are picked up now, but I'm going to go a little bit left field now, and I'm going to annoy Gabriele because I know he doesn't like German players, and I know he doesn't like the Bundesliga particularly much. At least he pretends not to. So I'm going to pick Maximilian Bayer from Hoffenheim. Nice. Again, my really left. Well, I think this. Uh, I have some time for you know the grafter, hardworking, uh, pressing player. He's kind of you know rectified the one thing in his game that he was lacking: the goal scoring. And he's he's coming up, you know, he's, he's coming on the leaps and bounds now. So I think again might see a move away from Hoffenheim, and that might help my my stats then eventually. But. You know, might not be the most talented player from a technical viewpoint, but, you know, I have a um, soft spot for a proper hard-working forward. Ryan, I, 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 I was looking for your well, facial. Is it Ryan or is it this uh, 21 century Fox, uh, whatever name of that company that actually is uh, <laughs> working with him? Good point. Yeah, Good who's point. picking? I'm not. I'm a bit confused, that's all. Like, yeah, Ryan. Right. What, what do your overlords tell you that you should pick? Uh, Sorry, I have to plug myself back in before I continue to talk. Um, we're going to stay in the Bundesliga. We're going with Piero Incapier, uh, the Ecuadorian center back from Leverkusen. And the one thing that scares me, I think I always get a little scared by center backs that play in a back three, where they're a little more protected by the sort of formation and the structure of the team. And you would think probably if he when he moves on for Leverkusen, he'll probably play in a back four, but he basically plays every minute of every game for one of the greatest Bundesliga teams of all time. They're an absolutely fantastic defensive team. He's very good on the ball, very smooth on the ball. Um, and also we go back to my criteria of center backs have a lot more longevity when they play at this age compared to wingers and midfielders. And given that this is a forward looking exercise, I think center backs are, are particularly valuable. I can't nice. argue with that. I'm up, um, and I'm not going to pick uh, a center back. No, someone from the Bundesliga? Uh, no, not no. from the Bundesliga either. I'm going to go for guys who we thought were really, really good a year ago and then kind of had a bit of a humdrum moment thinking that they're going to come back and be good again. It's like we see that the NFL draft, right? I mean, as you obviously know, we're doing this in April because the NFL draft is coming up. You always see that. You get the guy who was, you know, all everything their junior year. Yeah. Then they do their ACL, and so they fall in the draft. Oh, okay. So they but then – You take a punt, basically, right? Exactly. Okay. So okay. I am going to pick, with the 12th pick in the draft, Ryan – Gravenberg uh, so from Liverpool. Bayern, he doesn't play at Liverpool, but you still, you still, you still. He doesn't play at Liverpool because there's McAllister yeah, and I, there's Soberslai. Okay. No, no, no. But look, now that this manager is leaving, there'll be a different manager next year. Yeah, and I'm taking a long view on on okay. Ryan Gravenberg. Um, and with my 13th pick, I'm doubling down on the future. <laughs> Whoa. His name has been mentioned already. Nobody's had the cojones to pick him. Okay. But I am going to pick, despite the fact that he's had a horrendous injury record and he's had a horrendous time at Brighton and Hove Albion. That's right. I'm going to pick my second Brighton player because I am Team Tony Bloom. That's right. And Sufati, because you guys are going to get him. And at some point, he's got to come back and be good because we saw him be good. We saw him be better than all these guys yeah. at one point. And I think when, that's when, when again? Like, when around, he was around four years ago? Yes. Okay. Four, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a hell of a Now he's player. older and wiser. Yeah, okay. There's no reason he can't be fit again. He's a young, strong boy. Right. Um, Ryan. No. Yeah, it's, it's Ryan again. It's You're up. Again. Are you going to laugh uh, at my answer to Fati pick? Yeah, but I mean, ah, ha, ha. beyond laughing. We're, Number 14 uh, pick. We're going with Destiny Udogi here. Um, 
Udogi, only Kamavinga's played more minutes in the big five leagues among all the players that are eligible for this draft. Playing a lot of minutes at a young age portends future success. Also playing the position he plays, which is sort of kind of the modern fullback role where you pinch in rather than kind of overlap, I think is pretty tricky for a young player. And I think he's done fantastic in Serie A. He's been one of the better players for Tottenham this season and just has just played a ton. And all of the coaches who have coached him think he's good enough despite being super young to help their team win games. So I like Udogi for similar reasons um, with why I've picked all the other defenders. Um, I think okay. <laughs> he's playing so at a young age in that position. A lot going on. Tor, you're up with the number 15 pick. Right. Um, I've already established my position as the kind of uh, elitist hipster uh, guy here. So <laughs> I may as well just, you know, come what may and, and go for it. Look, I'm picking Laza Samaritic from Udinese. Uh, I can see such a quality player, you know, magnificent left foot set pieces taker. Can play in different roles in midfield, like his uh, energy as well. Can hit, uh, you know, strikes the ball so well. You know, he's going to leave Udinese at some point. And, um, you know, I think he's a potential big player there. I, I can't argue with that. I love Maybe. two Udinese guys picked back to back. Pretty special. Yeah. And when Ansu Fati goes there on loan next year, then it'll be three in a row. Jules. You're up with a number 16 and number 17 picks in the draft. So I won't lie to you all, but I was going to go in an old French or at least players who right. play in France uh, draft just because, you know, that's the way God wanted it to be. But I'm not, I'm not. Because there's a player in Italy that I've been really impressed with, Gava Bologna, and that's Calafiori. And I think Calafiori is going to have a hell of a future. He's going to get a big move in the summer. I know Thor likes him too. And, and so do you, obviously. And Ryan too. Uh, I just, there's everything I like about him. The way, the way he plays. The, 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 I don't know, the personality that he has. I think the future is great for him. And... Because also my t my club is a you know is a selling club, I can make a lot of money on Calafiori uh, when I sell him uh, after getting him in the draft. So Calafiori is my next pick. All right, you have the pick after that with number seventeen. I, I still can't believe two Italian guys going in the top sixteen, but hey, whatever, whatever floats your boat. None, neither of them picked by me. Uh, with number seventeen, from getting uh, suspended for from oh, betting. Yeah. If you pick them, they'd be at risk of that. But we're protecting Exactly. Them. I, I am a bad luck charm when it comes to this. Uh, number 17, Jules. So this is my last one, yeah? This is your final uh, pick. So in. I'm going a little bit left field, like the boys have. And I'm going to go to the Bundesliga as well. Because, again, he's a player that has really impressed me. Also with the French under-21 team. And that's Enzo Mio from Stuttgart. I just... I just love the left foot. I love the elegance. I love the swag, the flair that he has, the creativity. And I think he can, he will even develop more in an all around player because I think he's got such a great engine as well that he can play deeper. He can run a lot. He can do everything. There's, I don't think there's something that he can't do yet. He's not the tallest and the strongest physically, but I think he's very intelligent. So for me, Mio, who's been a key player in this incredible Stuttgart season, deserves to be in my draft. My number five. All right. This is the 18th pick in the draft uh, in the fifth round. Tor, you're up. Right. Uh, decision time. I'm going to go with... Um, yeah, okay. I'll just go full full Monty now. Uh, <laughs> Georgi Sudakov from Shakhtar Donetsk. Um, no point going for the safe choices. Big club players, apart from Pedro, I picked from the small little, you know, like cult club. So why not? Well, I'll go with Sudako. Very impressed with what I've seen from him. Um, of course, there is the Mudrik, uh, you know, the Mudrik um, precedent parallels, which are kind of maybe making a few clubs worried right now, but um. Yeah, no, I like him. Number 10, extremely good on the ball. Again, um, very creative, good one against one. Just kind of a modern, wonderful footballer. I enjoy watching him play. 
Nice. Georgi Sudikov, I, 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 that is a bit of a roll of the dice. That is high upside, I think. Uh, Ryan, number 19. This is yeah, your I final think, pick in the draft. I, I feel like I haven't had a real hipster pick yet, so I wanted to save it for my last pick. We're going with Amar Dedic, the uh, Bosnian right back for Salzburg in Austria. He seems kind of like the next... Um, super prospect to come out of Salzburg. Also by picking a Salzburg player, I'm sort of tapping into the hive mind of probably the, the best scouting apparatus in the world. And yeah, I, I think he's a pretty explosive, kind of interestingly lanky fullback, pretty good with both feet. And yeah, he he's, seems like he's going to be linked with pretty much every big team, either this summer or next winter or the summer after that has played a ton at a young age, which if we're sensing a theme here, that's pretty much the main thing that I look for in these players. Plus again, he's a defender. So playing a lot as a defender at a young age portends a lot more playing time going forward. Yeah. We're great for Harry. Ryan McCall. loves a defender. He wow. certainly does. So I'm in, I'm in a difficult spot now. I have the final pick in the draft and I'm looking at this and there are literally four guys that I could have seen as ra third round picks that are still available. Okay. And I have a couple of guys who had his fourth round picks, which tells me that I obviously see football very differently, probably much worse than you guys do. <laughs> um, I don't know who to pick. I genuinely don't know who to pick between these four guys because there's a big upside to all of them. I will go on the basis that transfer mark valuations are one aspect of this. Yeah. I will go. And if obviously it helps when you're English. Big build up. So it better be good. It's Gerard Branthwaite. Oh my God. Are we finishing this on Brunthwaite from Everton? Hey, I can keep going. I got more names. Should we do one more round? Wow. You guys up for it? Can we take you to six that, rounds? That is fine. Have no, you run out of French fine. players? Because then I don't know who you where you can go after Brunthwaite, to be fair. Oh, there's many places I could go. But I'm gonna go. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna take a page out of the Ryan O'Hanlon playbook because I know based on all his criteria, he's gonna go for the young player who plays a lot of minutes for a big six club in the Premier League and that player. And why, by the way, I also know that Tor likes him because Tor put him in his list of uh, however many players under the age of, of 23 or 21 or whatever it was. So I'm going to go for Mr. Pop Sar. There you go. Um, basically, but <laughs> that was a disappoint. To, to explain, to explain Branthwaite, um, I think there's always a premium on English defenders who are athletic and who are good leaders. And he's played a lot at a young age again, as has Pap Sar. Um, you know, last season, a bit up and down. And obviously he's got some baggage from the past, but I think he's established himself on a team that could be in the Champions League next season. Uh, so there. Right. Um, who goes after me? Let me just Ryan, you're up again. Bonus round. Bonus um, round, or, or sorry, did, did 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 your did your masters not give you any more players to pick? Yeah, they they. Uh, I only paid for the limited package. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we're good. We're good. Uh, we're just gonna keep going down the same uh, same theme. Also, I really wanted to take a French player from uh, Jules, so I'm happy to be able to do that here. We'll do Castello Lukaba from. I knew RB that was Leipzig. coming. Uh, you know, I'm just going to be who I am. Leipzig, another, t another sort of team where if, if you're a young player playing for Leipzig, you probably have a good career ahead of you. Plus again, he is a center back. So, you know, why not load up on another center back since we don't have positional designations here? I think he's, you know, he has the Leon and Leipzig sort of seal of approval. I also think just, if you just blindly picked all French center backs for this exercise, it probably wouldn't be a bad approach. So yeah, because yeah. Upamecano is working out so great at buying. Ah, uh, he's not in this draft. Why are you mentioning? No, 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 no. But it's the whole French thing, and like, yeah, all right, whatever. You know my thoughts and uh, on uh, on this whole Red Bull approach. But uh, good luck to you, Ryan. Um, Thor, you're up. Right. Um, I think um, Ryan's strategy is very interesting. We see if it. If he has got some kind of a hack here, or whether he's just kind of um, cracked the whole thing by actually finding a formula here with left footed um, center backs, and um, whether that's kind of a, a way to go. Here. But, uh, and fun enough, I had Dedic on my uh, long list there, which is an interesting call. 
I'll go a little bit more conventional this time around to everyone's disappointment. I, I am a little bit wary of putting, you know, picking injury prone players, but Jeremy Pino, if he can get back anywhere near where he was like a year, year and a half ago, I think it's, you know, top uh, La Liga player might get back in the Spanish, you know, national team. Just a great talent again. Excited to watch him. Great left foot, strikes the ball so well, plays nice combinations, dribbles. You know, just want to see him back on the pitch as soon as possible. So now with the final pick, final pick in the Gabby pick. Jewels, I've gone right. really, really left field because the boys have they, they've inspired me and they've like. So I'm going to go for Otavio from Porto, um, the Brazilian centre-back, because every time I've watched him this season, I've been impressed. He played only two games in the Champions League, so he played more in the league. But he does, just doesn't make any mistake. There's not a mistake that led to a goal. There's no mistake. There's just He rarely fouls anybody. He's just so he's so strong. He's so good. He, look, he looks composed. I think there's some improvement needed, certainly on the ball. But if you're looking for his kind of profile, I think Otavio at that age... Is already very, very promising. So it's another one. What's interesting is a lot of the picks, not so much yours, Gab. Sorry. Thank you. But that you could see the big move coming very quickly, either in the summer or or in January. Same for you, Gab, as well, for some of them, like Bronthwaite, probably. Or even and the Dingo. Um, so, and for me, Otavio could be the next one to be sold for a lot of money by Porto. So it just makes my uh, bonus pick. All right. Well, this brings the draft to an end. I'm just going to quickly run through. This is a list of names that I have who were draft eligible, who I thought were going to pick. And you can all laugh at me, who were not picked. If you have other names that you're surprised aren't picked. Do so you want me to tell you who I'm surprised you didn't pick? Someone well, you love and you mention all the time. A who? left back. Oh, Ian Matson. Yeah. Yes. I'm, I had. I'm surprised you didn't go get, get into your draft. I had Ian Matson on there. Uh, I had Mario from uh, Nottingham Forest yeah. as well. I think he's really good. I would have thought all you all, all you German uh, self lovers no, there. No. Oh, Kareem Adeyemi. Oh, because he's down, but now he's back up again. No, but it's funny. We don't hear about Kareem Adeyemi with his Salzburg pedig pedigree, right? <laughs> oh no, oh no. We, we, we all forgot. You forget about the guys that don't work out for you. This is the problem with you Red Bull people. Um, Nani Madueke, a lot of minutes for a big team in the Premier League. Um, Ahmad Diallo. Let's travel back in time. Look how much money they spent. To, they spent on him. Come on. You don't think he can come good again? I don't know. Uh, a player I really like, Kamal Dean Suleimana, who I don't know what's happened to him now and because his team were relegated and I don't follow the lower divisions in this country, but maybe I should just to watch him. Tino Livramento, a guy battling back after a bad injury, yeah. but I think there's a lot of ta uh, talent there. Aaron Hickey, nobody mentions, maybe because he didn't exactly pull up tree at, trees at Brentford, but he was good before. Ilya Zabarni, what, yeah, two Ukrainian for you? And... um. Or no, Kali Muendo, there's another one. No, I, no. I, I, would have been, I we would have made it just because he's from Paris, but I thought that was not enough. That's what I thought. And Georgino finally, Ruta almost made it. Who did? Georgino Ruta from, from Leeds almost made it onto my draft. But he plays in the championship, so I wouldn't know who he is. No, Although, not you, but, oh, but we, I saw him, we do. Yeah, you guys would. And, and Gabri Vega, he would have been the only Saudi Pro League player on here. Um, Speaking of people that like haven't. Uh, that were, if we did this exercise a couple years ago, Gio Reyna, um, if we did yeah. it a couple years ago, he would have been one of the first picks. Have to point him out as an American, also Eunice Musa, Joe Scali weren't mentioned. So just to expand our audience, wanted to throw their names in there. <laughs> Eunice Musa, of course, draft eligible. Uh, yeah, yeah. Nobody, just, nobody no, picked them, but no, no. Um, there you go. This is the draft. Now you can go and criticize all of us and tell us uh, how foolish we are. I, I do feel... Especially foolish for missing out on Jeremy Doku. That is the one thing I love. Simon Adingra. I would have taken no, Doku, that, even though that, you feel a little yeah, dirty taking two city guys back to back in Palmer and Doku. But I guess Palmer's no longer a city guy, so that would have been that would have been allowed, right? And by the way, not taking Pedri first, Jules. Nah, come on, please. Right. The guy is injured half of the season. It's not for me. All right, I need, I need a strong. I need a strong <laughs> Camavinga. There you have it. Uh, these were our choices. You may well disagree, um, but. Hopefully, we'll be back uh, in a year's time to do this all over again. Uh, thank you, Ryan uh, O'Hanlon. Thank you, Tor Christian Carlson.